Farigraph has beaten the fraud allegations, becoming one of the most used and most successful Pokemon at the Charlotte Regional Championships and the Regulation E format broadly. By blocking priority attacks with Armor Tail and being a reliable Trick Room setter for the absolutely busted Ursuluna Blood Moon, it can provide so much value and roll compression for a team that it's frankly difficult to find a reason not to use it. So today, let's discuss just how strong it is and why you should check it out. But first, this channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. Alright, let's talk about Farigraph, but before we start, the Charlotte Regional Championships was such a fun event to attend, I might have bubbled out of points, but I do have to say, um, on the way back from the uh, event, I was at the Charlotte airport and I wanted breakfast, so I went to Bojangles, and I got in line, I was quite tired, and I ordered one chicken bobingle, fully believing that it was real. They looked at me like I was insane, it's not real, it was the most embarrassing day of my life. So Farigraph is actually one of the best Pokemon in the format right now. Let's talk about that. Um, you might be wondering, why is Farigraph any better than it was prior? And it's a Pokemon that a lot of people would call fraudulent in previous formats, saying it's not that good, it's not actually like bringing as much value as you want to a team. Um, but at this point, it's almost certainly beaten the allegations. So, Farigraph has phenomenal bulk. 120 HP, 70 defense, 70 special defense, and 60 speed. It can do a lot of things for a team, but the most important thing is its ability to reliably get up Trick Room with its ability Armor Tail. So, it's able to get off Trick Room reliably because all priority moves are blocked. The best taunt users in the game right now are priority Pokemon. Mainly, like, your dedicated taunt user is probably going to be a Tornadus. Um, and that's because it's just like a really nice taunt Pokemon. You're able to prevent Trick Room coming out from other Pokemon, uh, even if, like, they're you know, protected by like a partner Pokemon if you have like the Covert Cloak item, uh, which I quite like on mine. So you can like stop Trick Room off of uh, other setters like uh, Indeedee. Well, I guess if, you know, <laughs> if Psychic Train isn't up, but like, yeah, like Indeedee um, versus um, Pokemon like Porygon 2. Uh, but I will say with Farigraph existing, uh, that makes things a lot harder because now you have to have a non-Prankster Taunt user, which that's most likely going to be something like uh, your... Incineroar, or I think I've seen like a Rillaboom run it once in a while, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, or even like a Fluttermane has actually run Taunt. I've seen that and that was like terrifying to run into. But yeah, um, this Pokemon was the absolute goat of the Charlotte Regional Championships, placing first, second, and fourth, as well as many in day two, uh, just because of the value that it actually brought to teams. So uh, the winner of the Regional Championship was obviously Wolf Glick, uh, who ran it on his team here. We can see uh, Urshi Rapid Strike, Incineroar, Fluttermane, Farigraph with the Throat Spray item, Ogre Pond, Hearthflame, and Rillaboom. And you might notice that it does have Trick Room, uh, even though this team doesn't exactly have a Trick Room mode. And I will say that this is actually a really cool way to have Farigraph bring value to a team um, without having a dedicated Trick Room partner. Because one, Trick Room is just nice because uh, versus Tailwind teams, you can actually, you know, allow for your... Uh, Pokemon that are usually quite fast, like, uh, you know, an Urshifu or a Rillaboom, uh, to underspeed things, get the Trick Room off, and then just start being the fastest thing in the field again. But also, Frigraph itself was the Trick Room Pokemon, which I found really interesting. We haven't seen this set since, like, Regulation D, uh, and that's, that's really funny. It's, like, one of the sets that people ran at first, and then it kind of fell off. So, uh, the Throat Spray allows for the Frigraph to go for a Hyper Voice and then become a really powerful offensive threat, because even though its special attack stats only 110, that's still pretty notably high, especially with 1.5. Throat Spray is basically a Choice Specs boost after a single use of Hyper Voice, so at that point you're just chunking things, and if you watch the finals match that he had, um, you can see that that Farigraph was really carrying its weight. So yeah, that's one of the many sets to run it on, uh, or to run it with, but obviously, you know, it also took second uh, with Nicholas Donnelly, who ran a team that was a you know pretty standard balance team but with a little bit better of a trick room option uh we see clear uh clear amulet iron hands which is a really nice option right now it's no longer running drain punch you know clear amulet close combat allows you to chunk or at least one shot like or one shot or at least chunk a lot of pokemon in the format including incineroar obviously uh or urshifu single strike which is becoming more and more prominent uh that will allow for you to just straight up one shot that pokemon uh but yeah also nicholas has you know, his own Ursuline of Blood Moon. Now, Ursuline of Blood Moon is a Pokemon that we need to talk about almost as much as Farigraph. 
So, why is Ursluna Blood Moon, like, just absolutely cracked in this format? And if I remember correctly, um, Nick's Ursluna actually did have speed investment, which we can't see right here. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's certain it did, because it did outspeed an Incineroar. So, Ursluna Blood Moon is a very valuable Pokemon, because it has just absurd damage output. Let me get the, the damage calculator out real quick. So, Ursluna Blood Moon has access to a 135 base special attack stat, which, if you're unaware... Uh, is the same as Fluttermane. But what it's able to do is click uh, Terra Normal Hyper Voice or Terra Normal Blood Moon. Blood Moon being, of course, a 140 base power move that can't be used twice in a row. And with a Terra Normal boost, basically doubling its base power to 280 with a life orb, it gets ridiculous. So, for example, let's say that you are some poor soul with a Golden Go. Normally, Golden Go would be able to eat this hit, right? So if you want Golden Go to switch in on and resist the normal type hit because let's see you have an Incineroar and it's like, I don't know, I, I guess that's not a good example. Let's just go with it anyways though. Let's just say that you have a Golden Go that needs to switch in on a normal type move. It doesn't actually eat the hit that well um, because Terra Normal Blood Moon just does ridiculous damage and will do 77 to 91% on the Golden Go switch in if it's a non-bulky Golden Go. But even if it is a bulky Golden Go, you can expect to lose more than half your health and then they can follow it up with obviously an Earth Power to one shot or whatever, or a Hyper Voice. Because Blood Moon into Hyper Voice for some reason is a roll to just straight up one shot you, or two shot you. So yeah, um, this thing's ability lets normal type moves hit ghost types. It's it's pretty ridiculousness. Also, it ignores evasiveness. That's pretty cool, you know? Let's say that you're facing that muck team that's running around uh, with Minimize uh, and Power of Alchemy stuff. Yeah, technically, like, you don't lose to that. So that's that's also very nice. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Ursuline Blood Moon is the sort of Pokemon that you can just throw onto a team uh, with a Ferrigraph, and all of a sudden, not only do you have like two Ghost immunities, uh, but also you have a reliable Trick Room option into a lot of things. And it's like a fairly, it's it's not like fast, but like its speed tier isn't super low. 52 means that you can invest some speed, and then after Tailwind, you're able to operate as well and outspeed things like opposing Urshifu, uh, opposing Entei, uh, and then you're still able to Trick Room on them and become, you know. <laughs> a Trick Room Sweeper. You, have, you get the best of both worlds. You're like Hannah Montana, bro. Uh, but yeah, we can see Ursuline Blood Moon was very prominent in Top Cut as well, with Nicholas, um, Arbin, and uh, Enzo running it on their teams. So yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to like take a little detour to talk about the Ursuline. Let's talk about why Ferrigraph is like super important beyond the Ursuline par uh, partner. Priority spam usage is at an all-time high, and we thought this was true uh, going back to like Regulation D, where we saw a bunch of Chente, or not Chente, uh, Pow Knight teams. Um, but now we see the likes of Chente. Being able to block Hyper Offense um, Priority Spam teams with Armor Tail is really important uh, when you consider just how many Pokemon rely on their priority moves. Of course, Tornadus with Taunt is one of them, uh, Incineroar with Fake Out. Uh, but also, we got the introduction of Raging Bolt and Entei in this format. Uh, Raging Bolt obviously having access to Thunderclap, which was pretty good. Uh, Raging Bolt didn't perform as much or as well as I thought it would, but we, there was one at, uh, in top eight on Neil Patel's team. Uh, but yeah, so having this uh, Pokemon on your team means that game plans that would normally be thwarted by a Terra Normal E-Speed coming out from an Entei or a Choice Band Dragonite, or even like a Sucker Punch, are a lot more difficult to deal with. It's the sort of Pokemon that you can actually lead off with to go for Trick Room, or just have in the back to threaten uh, to block a priority move. So like, let's say that you were running uh, Wolf's team. It has an Ogre Pond Hearth Flame and a Fluttermane and an Urshifu Rapid Strike. All three of these Pokemon are extremely fast and have the capability of one-shotting many things in the format. But with the Ferrigraph in the back, not only can you actually switch it in to threaten to block a, a Terra Normal E-Speed from an opposing uh, Dragonite or Entei or a Sucker Punch from like a King Gambit or a Chen Pao, but just the existence of it and not revealing it means that your opponent might respect the option and make a misplay and not go for that priority move uh, on lead or even like if you've revealed three of your four Pokemon. Uh, that allows for these Pokemon to operate a lot more freely and just get the job done. Along with that, uh, the existence of Ogre Pond actually makes it really easy to get Trick Room offs uh, because Ogre Pond Hearth Flame has been picking up a lot in usage. You're actually able to lead off with Follow Me plus Trick Room, meaning that even Taunt leads that don't have priority um, are going to be blocked by that uh, Ogre Pond. So that's actually really, really cool. Like, there's a lot of things going right in the metagame for the Ferrigraph to have um, a place on a lot of teams. Something else that's helping it out quite a bit, not only is the priority spam, uh, but its ability to, in a sense, wall out Dragonite. Uh, so a, one of the most 
one of the most popular ways to run this Pokemon is Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam with the Citrus Berry and Trick Room and Helping Hand. Now, while its Dazzling Gleam doesn't do too much without the Terra Fairy, um, it is a pretty significantly strong move uh, into a lot of the Pokemon that are weak to it at the moment. Notably, Urshifu Dark, which has become more and more popular. If we were to take just like a pretty bulky Ferrigraph spread uh, with, I don't know, just like a bulky Imprison set, right? And give it like four special attack in Dazzling Gleam, right? Versus a Urshifu Single Strike. So some Urshifu, or some Urshifu Single Strike are going to be Sash, some are going to be Band, and some are going to be Scarf. Uh, let's just go with Band Adamant, right? If they want to go for Terra Dark, um, Wicked Blow, and try to one-shot you, not only can you block it with the Terra Fairy, allowing you to live with more than half your health, but your Dazzling Gleam is actually going to threaten a one-shot on the non-Terra Dark ones. Because they are fighting in Dark, it's a times 4 weakness. So your entire matchup into Urshifu Dark could be, I go for the Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam, and that's really good. Another thing that is really, really powerful about Ferrigraph is its access to Helping Hand. Uh, and its ability to play next to very strong uh, Pokemon that are known for their ability to one-shot things like Fluttermane. So this is actually something that I did quite a bit. Wolf didn't have this option, but um, I was actually running Helping Hand next to my Fluttermane on my team. And I'm actually going to show the team. I've been hiding the team forever, but I did so bad at the event, despite doing pretty good at Portland, that I don't mind showing the team anymore. Oh, well, that's not it. Where is it? Where's Spider Gang? Whatever, we'll go with this. So, um... Choice Specs Fluttermane next to a Ferrigraph is actually a really, really oppressive lead in some matchups because if you go for the Helping Hand next to the Choice Specs Fluttermane, uh, it makes it so not only can they not fake out either of your Pokemon, but you're also able to go for one of the most powerful combinations of the game, being Specs Terra Fairy Moonblast uh, with a Helping Hand into one shotting basically anything. Uh, we'll go with a we'll go with this. So Fluttermane, we'll go with my custom set. It should be 52 Special Attack. Um, and then into King Gambit, which has been running around quite a bit. So if it's just like a max HP for, uh, for defense King Gambit, the Terra Fairy Choice Specs Moonblast is a roll to one shot, meaning that you are actually still threatened by like Iron Head, uh, which is pretty scary. But if you go for the Helping Hand with it, uh, you're going to be able to just threaten a one shot on it immediately. And if you're facing like an AV King Gambit, which those guys also happen to run um, Iron Head pretty usually because it's just like, you know, a really good option on it, obviously. Uh, the Moonblast is a roll to KO if you have higher investments. Like, let's say you have like 100, then yeah, you actually have a decent chance of one shotting AV King Gambit because Terra Fairy plus Choice Specs is just a ridiculous amount of damage. So that's really cool. It also helps out with Urshifu Rapid Strike. You're going to be able to helping hand that move. Uh, and threaten one shots and a lot of things, or three shots rather. But yeah, it's just like, it's a really scary Pokemon. There's a lot of teams that have to respect the option right now. The Citrus Berry also makes it really difficult to KO. So one of its best partners actually is Incineroar, even though it also is like pretty good into Incineroar, because Incineroar will be able to immediately intimidate a Pokemon uh, like Chen Pao uh, and allow for the Ferrigraph to live the hit a lot easier. We can actually do some damage calcs here. So if Ferrigraph, we'll go with the set that I ran. I was running like a Psychic Noise set uh, with some decent investment. Uh, and also a Citrus Berry. So let's say that you're facing off against a Chen Pao, Adamant, Terra, whatever. Uh, the Ice School Crash is going to be doing 57%, or, uh, you know, above 50% usually. So like, let's say it does 50 flat. You get the 30% back with your Citrus Berry. You're now at uh, 80, or whatever the Citrus Berry recovery is. 25%, I mean. Uh, so let's say you get like the 25% back with the Citrus Berry. You're now at 75 uh, health, right? And then there's usually an Entei next to it. An Assault Vest Entei does hit fairly hard. That Sacred Fire with the Sword of Ruin active is going to be doing 58%. Meaning that since you're at 75% health, you're actually going to live the double up even without an Intimidate from the Incineroar helping out versus the Chen Pao. But if the Chen Pao is Intimidated, you actually live that even easier. So like that's just like insane just the bulk you're able to put onto this thing to allow for it to reliably get off the Trick Rooms. Uh, beyond that, there's a lot of Pokemon that have to respect it. Like, the way that you typically deal with Trick Room leads is going to be by leading off with, like, a Fake Out Pokemon, uh, plus a Taunt Pokemon, but, like, the existence of, uh, the Ferrigraph to block the Fake Out means that Pokemon like Rillaboom aren't able to click Grassy Glide into you, uh, Fake Out into you, and it also makes the Trick Room mode a lot more reliable. Like, Trick Room Pokemon, the usual way to deal with it is to A, reverse the Trick Room, which this thing is able to prevent you from reversing Trick Room by clicking Imprison, um, or B, using your priority moves. We're talking about Aqua Jet, Sucker Punch, Extreme Speed, Grassy Glide, Fake Out. 
all these different moves that will allow you to deal with the partner Earth Stone of Blood Moon, specifically Grassy Glide's like a really big one uh, since it's super effective. It just turns off that option and it makes it a very oppressive Pokemon to deal with. I would honestly say if Ferrigraph didn't exist, we would not see the Earth Stone of Blood Moon usage as high as it is. Like if we take a look at every single Earth Stone of Blood Moon, barring this one, uh, we can see that they're basically almost always paired with a Ferrigraph. And you know, let's take a detour. What was this Earth Stone of Blood Moon cooking without the Ferrigraph? It was probably just a bit of a faster set. Like I said, it's able to operate um, without the need for Trick Room if you have Tailwind because of how fast uh, it's able to get despite its low speed. But yeah, we see uh, Earth Stone of Blood Moon Ferrigraph. We see, let's see where we can find another one. Earth Stone of Blood Moon Ferrigraph, Earth Stone of Blood Moon Ferrigraph, Earth Stone of Blood Moon Ferrigraph. I want to find just one more Earth Stone of Blood Moon that does not have a Ferrigraph next to it. Then I'll be satisfied, you know? It's it's like actually like so hard to figure out if there is a single Earth Stone of Blood Moon without a Ferrigraph. There's a Ferrigraph without an Earth Stone of Blood Moon, but we know that was an option. Yeah, no, like they're just such an iconic duo that it's uh it's just really strong, you know? Oh, here's one. 64th place, top 64 points. Yeah, an Earth Stone of Blood Moon with Urselio. Which, I suppose, you know, that works as well. Uh, for the rest of the team, it kind of makes sense why you would want the Cresselia. But yeah, the Ferrigraph is typically the best option. It's just such a strong Pokemon, and it's like kind of hard to explain in any details further than you block priority, you have a ghost immunity, you're able to tear a fairy from the dark types uh, to not only threaten them back with a one-shot with Dazzling Gleam, but also just survive the hit. And you're just like a bulky dude overall. Like, it's very hard to one-shot a Ferrigraph. And of course, Wolf proved that you can also go on the offensive with the Throat Spur set and Hyper Voice. But yeah, that's basically all I had to say about Ferrigraph. I wanted to talk about um, why it's like so oppressively powerful in the format right now, uh, why you should probably be running it, and why I think it's a little bit of a throw not to run it. I mean, like, with so much priority going around, Entei has E-Speed, Dragonite has E-Speed, Sucker Punch on Champau, Aqua Jet from Urshifu, Sucker Punch from uh, Urshifu Single Strike, Grassy Glide, Fake Out, Taunt. It feels like this Pokemon has so much value packed into it that it's hard to find any other Pokemon that can do its job. Or if you're crazy, you know, you could actually go with, you could actually go with Bruxish. I'm pretty sure this thing is Trick Room. It does. You could do, you could do Sash, Terra, Ghost, Bruxish, you know, or whatever you need. You know, technically this Pokemon also blocks that. But yeah, that's, that's a joke. I'm not actually recommending that. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about uh, Ferrigraph very briefly today. Um, you know, quick update. I've been a little bit slacking with the videos lately. We're going to get back on track. I've been really busy with travel, uh, but you can expect a new video to drop Monday. I'm scripting that today. Uh, like a long video, obviously. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.